السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله ما شاء الله نايس تو يو اجين ام ليت مي جيت يو ذا ذا رايت سكرين ان شاء الله Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Ghanam. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. We'll go to uh, the right item, the right screen. We just lost it. <laughs> yeah, I can see a blank screen. Right, okay. Um, can you see the screen, the white? Still black, is it? Can you see the screen now? Yeah, you can see the screen now. Yeah, that's better. In Arabic, obviously. Um, we reached towards the end of the items. Um, and the next will be bring what other people say and negate it because here he's confirming what he believes and then he goes and discuss what other people believe and why it is not correct and we're talking about aqidah the core belief in islam the, the um, basic belief and the, usually the unseen we're not talking about anything. The scene is not aqidah. The scene things, you can't come to me, you have to believe there is sun. I don't need to believe, just seeing it, it's outside. You have to believe there's cloud. He said, no, <laughs> wait for a couple of days, there will be cloud there. So um, you have to believe there's mountain or the, you have to believe there is a city called New York. No, that's, you know, this thing you see, it's not a belief. That's, um, uh, take, for granted you know that is there because you saw it yourself using your senses or using your senses i'm not going to help you seeing there's angels and seeing there's devils and seeing there's uh, allah has the creator and um, you have to believe and he tells you how to believe why to believe because there is a methodology to believe and there is um um design behind what you see something that is so there is designer there is a, a cause and effect nothing comes from nothing it has to be a founder and these sort of things um so the last one we discussed yesterday was to leave um anyone who um, bring innovation to islam now innovation has to be contrary to a text i haven't i haven't said that that's yesterday Innovation has to be a contrary against a text in the Quran or the Hadith Sahih. So if you have a text against it, then whoever come and say this exists, it's obviously wrong. Like when Ghulam Mirza pretended to be the Messiah, he came and uh, he's a prophet and things. And, um, there is a text, there's no, La Nabiya Ba'di. La Nabiya Ba'di. So he said, oh, he is a the returning Messiah. And um, uh, somebody came from Syria to meet uh, the Ahmadi leader, this Oran Meza. And on the border, they asked him, Are you who is going to visit? They say, He said, Oh, Jesus Christ came, so I'm coming to meet him. So when he said, Jesus Christ came, I'm coming to meet him, they straight away thought there's something wrong with his brain. And uh, do you know somebody else? He said, yes, I know Dr. Ghanam, he married one of our relations. So they phoned me and, uh, and I said, I don't personally know the person, 
But if he's talking like this and he's not making sense, then it's up to you to decide whether he gets in or not. So, um, so this is uh, when Isa alayhi comes, there's no doubt about it. It will be a major event and he will be coming, uh, carried by the angels and he will land in Damascus and the um, false messiah will be there at that time and then he will uh, go and defeat the false messiah. It's a big event. It's not something the world will not be aware of. When uh, Baha'u'ddin came and said that he is a prophet, again, the Quran said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he is the seal of the prophethood. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said about himself, La Nabiya Ba'di, there is no prophet after me. So obviously that's innovation. That's in, and you have to run away from that. You have to um, disagree with it and keep stay clear from it. Like they came and said that uh, you have to fast 19 days instead of 30 days in Ramadan. And that's contrary to Allah Azawajal says, Shahr al-Ramadan al-Vinzir al-Firu al-Quran, who then in Nasi al-Bainat al-Mahud al-Furqan, from al-Shahidah minkum al-Shahra, whoever witnessed the month, fal-Yasum, who you have to fast all the month. So there is text against it. What's people who come and shout about bid'ah, they don't bring a text. You say something, like I mentioned, I mentioned to you yesterday, using misbaha. There's no text against using it. So you're not innovating something against the text. The Prophet ﷺ never said, don't use misbaha. When you use a knife and fork to eat, there's no text against it. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ ate with his fingers, but he didn't say don't eat with knife or forks. So when you come and say it's innovation, innovation against what? You have to have a text, and you actually oppose the text. Um, and you can measure... You say, it. sorry. They do say it's sunnah to do that. That's, that's what they say. It's sunnah to eat with your hands and it's sunnah not to use the misbah. Yeah, this is, this is the, um, the model they have. Argument. Because yeah. Yeah, this is um, where we are not living the era of the Prophet. We're not living his personal life. We're not living um, his um, human life. Uh, functions, the way he um, ate, the way he people like to copy, it's up to them but the message came with a message a clear message, A, B, C, D uh, we lost one now uh, uh, Ahmed, we lost them oh no, he's here um, no, I, I'm, I'm here, so that, that, that's a good point that, that's like saying um, the prophet travelled on horses and camels and it's, it's been good for us to do the same but now those animals been uh, traveling by uh, old methods are obsolete. We know we travel by car, but our prophet never traveled in a car. Yeah, so, so it, it makes sense. Our, our scholars taught us that anything which has to do with his human functions, um, whatever he dressed, whatever his uh, hair looked like, whatever, his, uh, whatever he ate or didn't eat, is not part of the worship. You're not worshipping Allah uh, by copying his human likes and dislikes. And he's also um, science, scientific uh, knowledge. You don't follow his scientific knowledge because you are, uh, when, when they asked him about shall we pollinize trees or not, he said it doesn't make a difference. So they did not pollinize their trees. And the next day, the next year, they didn't have, the end of the year, they didn't have any crops, very rarely. And they said, we asked you, he said, this is what I guessed, you should be more aware of your dunya than me. So don't ask me about your dunya, about what, um, uh, shall I use uh, paracetamol for the pain, for the headaches or not. That's up to you. You discover, Allah made it your um, job to discover what's on earth and use it or not use it. But he came to tell us about what Allah wanted us to do with regard to things we have limited ability to discover. Now, I mentioned a few weeks ago um, a, a lecture, small lecture on why Allah Azawajal wanted us to pay two and a half percent um, uh, zakat. Why not uh, ten percent and why not one percent? And I will show that the whole system based on needing new money every year. 
because governments have a lot of uh, expenses, um, education, uh, defense, uh, uh, social care, uh, uh, health care, and so on and so forth. We have always people who are disabled, can uh, never work. We always have people who might go sick. We might have people who are, you know, ladies giving birth to children, looking after children. We have people who are um, uh, born deformed, whatever. We have always we have a new need for new money every year, and the number of people is increasing. So Islam, for the new money, he said you need every year two and a half percent of the wealth to be brought back and used as new money. That's, Can it be five percent? Can it be five percent? Hey, let me finish this. The, the Western, um, when they, uh, they were not using the car, so they were allowing wars to get new money, hijacking each other country and start, start trying to steal their, their gold. When Hitler came to France, and the French knew that the first target will be the gold in the central bank. So they took the gold and, and shipped it to Canada. They hide the gold in Canada. So when he came, he went to the central bank, there were no gold. In 1971, when um, uh, Richard Nixon abolished the Britain Wood Agreement and made the gold no longer the uh, gold standard, um, they start printing money. And that allowed them not to run wars anymore. They don't need to run wars. If they need money, they will print money. Now, when people didn't know how much money they need to print and they start printing too much, they went into hyperinflation and that destroyed their currency. When the end of the day, I mean, it took them from 1971 till 2008. And before that as well, they came to conclusion that you need to keep the inflation to an hour percent. It means that you need to keep printing money with the um, um, uh, percentage of two and a half percent. So every year they bring, bring two and a half percent new money and they put it into circulation and allows them to uh, run services without raising tax, without uh, reducing uh, services, austerity, without uh, uh, increasing the interest. They used to get money from interest. Now they are not getting money from interest. They don't need, or they print money. Now interest near zero. They're talking about even now make the interest uh, minus, which is the case in, uh, in Sweden and in the ECB in Europe. So 2.5% seem to be exactly the right amount. When it comes to 5% and 10%, you're talking about uh, crops. When you go to agriculture, and when you go to um, agriculture, which you water and things, and when you go to um, uh, agriculture, which you don't water, and when you go to treasures, you'll find underground like oil and metals and things, it goes to 20% because of the rarity of things. Livestock, two and a half percent, um, like money, because it's not easy to keep. It's difficult to keep livestock. It's easy to, to plant trees and, and crops and, uh, and grain and uh, maize and things. So it's five percent on the crops. Um, but if you come to the Western society, they haven't got anything like this. It took the mankind from Adam till now to discover that they need two and a half percent new money, but they didn't rely on taking um, from the wealth of the wealthy. So when they invent new money, they dilute the value of the money and that caused another problem. So it took us thousands of years before we discovered the importance of, um, uh, of uh, zakat, taking two and a half percent from the money already in existence. When it comes to divorce, it took them, um, 2,000 years before they started allowing divorce. Islam allowed it 1,400 years, but they went through a lot of hustle and problems. Because if somebody hates her husband and she can't divorce him, he cannot divorce her. They used to kill the wife to get rid of her or kill the husband or they go and have secret affair. They don't have polygamy. They allowed promiscuity. They allowed having a mistress, but they wouldn't allow a um, second wife. They will come to Perhaps it will take them another 100 years or 200 years to allow a second wife. Because second wife only used by 2% of the general public. And 
third wife is 0.5 of general population, and fourth wife is 0.01. So we don't have like 50% of the people will have second wife. On average, when you go to countries where a, a second wife is applied, it's not more than 2%. And then you have in the birth rate, you have 51 boys born and 49 girls born. When they reach the age of 20, the percentage reversed, become you have 20, um, uh, 51 girls and 49 boys. So you, all have, you always have two girls who don't have boys to marry. So what she will do, they will pinch somebody else's husband. Um, Islam allows second marriage because that will allow um, everyone to have a partner. Um, when they came now to Islam banned homosexuality um, and uh, lesbian, and when, okay, they, yeah, you... yeah, when they are coming to discuss, to allow it or not allow it, they say this is enjoyment and this is your choice. But then they forgot that it has a lot to do with the re reproduction, the, um, the man replacing himself. Now you need 2.1 children per parents to carry on living um, with the same um, number of um, human beings on earth. The percentage dropped in China, dropped in Japan, dropped in the Scandinavians below 1.5. In Britain now 1.76. Anything less than 1.82 would be irreversible. That will take them another probably 50, 100 years before they correct it. They're saying now by the 2050, there will be more Muslims in Europe than Christian. Whether they meant Christian and there is atheist, I'm not counting mm -hmm. the atheist, I don't know. But the Muslims are not, are still reproducing three or four, but definitely more than two. And um, they keep their percentage increasing. Now this, you can't guess it. This is why there is law from Allah Azawajal. The law from Allah for things you can either never discover or it will take you thousands of years before you discover. So Allah Azawajal gave you a head start, do it this way. Alcohol, it took them again 2,000 years, 10,000, 100,000 years before they discovered any amount of alcohol is harmful. So any amount, they said any amount will harm you. And that was it's an Islamic um, uh, decision 1,440 years ago. They took them till 2000 before, before they started saying it. And um, um, the same with a lot of things in Islam, which is haram in Islam or Allah. But, so when you come to the um, innovation, innovation, if there is a text, you are against a text, that's innovation. If there is no text, it's you guessing. you guessing it's better. Well, if it was better, it would have been in the Sharia, in the religion. It would have been included. Allah said in the Quran, "Ma farratna fil kitabi min shay." We didn't leave out of the Quran anything which is important to you. It's all in the Quran. You don't need more than that. Allah said, "Today I completed your religion, and I perfected my lamb, my favor on you. I accepted the stuff for you." It's clear text in the Quran, you don't need to add or delete or replace. So this is when people come and take things which are not um, stated in the Quran or Sahih Sunnah, they are making themselves a God and that's haram. So when they come to you, oh, it's, it's haram to use Mispaha. Why is haram? Is, it, is there a, a text about it? The Prophet never used it. Now the, our teachers say, if the Prophet never used it, it's not part of Sharia. He never used millions of things, billion of things. It cannot be part of Sharia. Hey, the Prophet never used it, yeah? So what? I'm using it. Is there a text against it? No. So it's haram. If it should be haram, there would have been a text. Because Allah Azzawajal created the human being and he knows what they need till the day of judgment. This is why he's not sending any more messengers. You don't need more than what's in the Quran and the Hadith Sahih. And that's it. So those 
who, who come and argue about innovation, they have some mental problem discussing how Sharia is taken. Sharia is taken from the text, the Quran and Sahih Sunnah and the consensus of the Sahaba and Tabi'in, you know, they agree that this is good to, to follow. But when you come to um, your opinion that the Prophet never did it, the Prophet, the Prophet never did millions of things. And it's not part of Sharia that he didn't do it. Otherwise, you put yourself in trouble that uh, millions of things he never done. Uh, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to say it's haram or halal? No, leave it to research and study and science and things. Ahmed, you have. To do it. Yeah, so so that 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 makes sense. And uh, yeah, Islam wouldn't be an universal uh, religion if that wasn't the case. People, because people still need to retain their cultural identity and cultural way of doing certain things. But if we all, you know, uh, the Prophet was an uh, Arab descendant. So if we follow everything, then we lose our own uh, cultural identity, for example. Yeah? So if we all dressed up like a Prophet, then, you know, the whole Islamic world would look the same. But if you go to different parts of the world, so my parents are from Bangladesh, and women traditionally uh, always worn saris. Yeah, so, um, and uh, men wore uh, longi, the, uh, the long uh, piece of cloth. So, so what you're saying makes, makes perfect sense. And I think uh, those who are um, oppose it need to, you know, study and study it and inform us uh, from a practical and scientific and uh, Islamic point of view rather than, well, this is what the Prophet did. Yeah, that's, you mentioned the, the, the dress. Uh, um, the dress in the Quran, the head cover for the woman called khimar, the body cover for the woman called jilbab, to cover the body from top to the bottom. For men, the aura is from the belly bottom to the knee. Whatever mm. you use to cover it is not mentioned in the Quran. It just has to be. Yeah, yeah. In, in the hadith, it shouldn't be transparent, it shouldn't be translucent. You can't see the body through it. So that's mm. yes in the hadith. But whatever mm. you dress, when people mm -hmm. come and insist that the thobe, the galabia, is for men, that's their ada, their tradition, nothing to do with Islam. People have, um, Islam came and he kept all traditions if it doesn't clash with the Quran or Hadith Sahih. If it clashes with the Quran or Hadith Sahih, you say, no, you have to do it this way. If it doesn't mm. clash, you accept the culture of that, um, uh, that country. Now, the best example is when Shafi'i um, studied Islam in Medina with Imam Malik. He was his teacher. He studied Islam and he went to Iraq, and at that time Abu Hanifa was already dead, but he met his the students of Abu Hanifa, and he studied with them, and he met Imam Hanbali as well, who later came. And then he went to Egypt. So he wrote his uh, Risala in, uh, um, he wrote his book in Iraq about Mashab Shafi'i, and when he went to Egypt, he changed a lot of it because he found they have different culture, and the Iraqi have different culture, and he came from different culture in Mecca and Medina. The, so he, he went back to the essence of Islam, and he wrote his book according to the essence of Islam. So he's different than Imam Malik, who insisted that the Sharia is what the people of Medina were applying. So he differed quite a lot, and he was different than Imam Ibn Hanbal, who insisted that every hadith is equal to the other hadith. So you have to apply all the hadith at the same time and made um, the flexibility of Islam too rigid. This is why people take Hanbali as really rigid. And he put his um, mazhab to uh, accommodate all cultures wherever you go. Because he tried, he was born in Gaza in, um, in, um, in uh, Palestine, he went as a child, lived in Mecca, and then he went to Medina, studied when he was a teenager and in, under Imam Malik, and then he went to Iraq, and he lived with the Hanafi um, 
inheritance is Abu Hassan Shibani and, and, the, and the rest of the student of Abu Hanifa. And he had a lot of discussion and argument with uh, Ibn Hanbal. And then he went to Egypt and he looked into the practice of Muslims in Egypt. And then he wrote his book um, the second time, revised it. Now, one of the things like he clashed with, uh, with Ibn Hanbal, Ibn Hanbal says, whoever doesn't pray, he's kafir. He's no longer a Muslim. And Shafi'i said to him, uh, what he need to do to become Muslim again? He said, he should say, Shadu la ilaha illallah, Shadu la Muhammad Rasulullah. But that's by definition, you have to say Shahada to become Muslim. And Imam Shafi'i said, he's already saying it. He never denied la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. He's just not praying. So he defeated Hanbali's mentality. Hanbali's mentality is, too rigid, because he took the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, Now, kafar here has multiple meaning. Ibn Hanbal took it as went out of Islam. But if you come to Islam to go out of Islam, you have to deny that there is God. And deny there's only one God. Deny Muhammad Rasulullah. Deny the Quran came from Allah. Deny the hadith sahih from the Prophet but this person is not denying he's just not praying if he come and say no salah is not correct it shouldn't be salah then he is denying the Quran which is Kalamullah the words of Allah then you can base your decision that he is denying Allah is the most wise the most knowledgeable the, the one in charge and things that takes him out of his stuff so so when you come to Kafara, Allah Azzawajal said, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حَجُّ الْبَيْتِ الْمَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيرًا عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Those who, Allah Azzawajal obliged people to go to Hajj. And whoever, Kafara, Kafara here, he wouldn't go to Hajj. He, 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 he just will not fulfill that requirement. He's not saying Hajj, not Islamic, but he's just not, not going to Hajj. And then they go, Shafi'i go to Hadith, the Prophet وسلم, a woman came and wanted to divorce her husband. And she said, he asked her why, she said, I, li I don't like kufr in Islam. I don't like kufr in Islam. What that means, she denies the husband his rights. She doesn't like him anymore, so she's going to deny him his rights, like to sleep with her and, and uh, um, look after him and things. So she was divorced. But the word kufr, has multiple meaning. If you come and take only one meaning, you make Islam too rigid, it's difficult to apply and you lose people because they can't apply it. Because like um, Imam Ibn Hanbal, he took the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, um, I wish I asked somebody to pray on my behalf in the mosque and I go to people who are praying in their houses and burn their houses on top of them. Now, Ibn Hanbal took that hadith that every single one has to go and pray in the mosque by force. So when I was in, in Riyadh, the oh, policeman no. came to my house with, uh, with a religious person, Mutawwar, they call him, and they asked him, why are you not praying in the mosque? If you said, I don't want to pray in the mosque, I will take you to the uh, police station where you will stay three nights until you change your mind and you pray in the mosque. So that's Forcing that mentality now failed failed miserably in Saudi. So um, yes, Ahmed bin Hanbal is a valid mazhab, and it's a mazhab taken from Quran and Sunnah. But in many ways, he is more uh, rigid than the flexibility of um, Shafi'i and flexibility of Abu Hanifa. This is why you see the majority of Muslims across the globe are Shafi'i, and then next to them are Hanafi. Next to them will be Malki and the minority is Hanbali. Um, but it's a method of driving from the Quran and Sunnah. And um, uh, when they say they base on Quran and Sunnah, but they take one part of the Quran ahead of another part, or they drop, like um, Hanafi dropped the Sunnah, um, he take only the Hadith Mutawatir or Mashhur, and the Hadith, single Hadith, he drops it to bottom. While Shafi'i, he looks into the comparison between all these hadith and ayah, and then he takes. Maliki will only take things practiced in Medina. 
and that's the only thing he, he takes. Hanbali he takes it all at the same level, which is not. If the hadith is there, you have to do it. But there's other hadith saying that you have this flexibility. So when it came to bid'ah, those who follow Madhab Hanbali are those who were more rigid in um, thinking about to follow the message or to follow the messenger. So um, the messenger is an example how to apply the message. But when it comes to his personal life, like he married 10 women, but we can't, we're not allowed. Then he, his wife, were not allowed to marry anybody else after the divorce or after the prophet died. There's certain rules for the prophet وسلم, and certain rules for his wives. And we have to keep away from copying everything the Prophet وسلم, did. And when it comes to um, innovation, unless there's a text in the Quran or the Sahih Hadith, you cannot ban it. You cannot come and say to people. So that's what he was talking about in number 66. Um, and um, uh, 67, um, he's saying we will go and discuss the contrary to his way of thinking in a fusul, which we're going to tackle from tomorrow to the end of Ramadan, inshallah. So it will be um, uh, tomorrow and five more, six sessions. I'll try to cover the negations. He, he took the way the Mu'tazila and the way the Jahmi and the way of, the, like Jahmiya, like um, the Qaidana and Khawarij, and he negated them, Mu'tazila and Jabriya, Jabriya, those who were believing that Allah Azawajal forced all of us to behave in one way and we have no choice, and, or uh, the opposite to them, Qadariya, uh, those who uh, say everything in our hand, and um, uh, Allah doesn't force us at all. So you need to navigate your way around these things and try, inshallah, to, to do this um, uh, the next six sessions. Now, I'm not going to, nothing to discuss a point now, 67 is the last one, before we go back to the fossils. Do you have any more questions? I want me to explain something before we finish the, the, the session today. We have five minutes, six minutes to go. Any of you? Yes, no? I, yeah, um, if, if, if you don't mind, I just want to go back on uh, an earliest discussion uh, on the story of, of Suleiman. Um, and the Queen of Sheba. You are and sitting at the window behind you. We can only see black face. You need to oh, sit sorry. with the window facing you. You're facing the window. Sorry. Instead can of the see, window. You... Yeah, we see can more you of your you... face now. Uh, you want to talk sorry. about Suleiman in the Seher or you want to talk about Suleiman with the Queen of Sheba? Because there's two yeah, separate there's... objects. Yeah, I, I, I want to talk about the fact that Sulim, um, when the um, the translation is the, the, the following in Surah Al Namal, it says, um, Suleiman said, "Which of you can fetch me her throne before the people?" They are not talking about the Sahar. You're talking about uh, the Queen of Sheba. When yes. Suleiman asked this question, now. Uh, who can bring me her throne before she comes to me, which he already left Yemen. She already left Yemen coming yeah. to him. He wants the throne to arrive to him before she arrives. Now, yes. that takes nearly a month or more than a month walking from uh, Yemen to uh, Palestine. So, yes. Afrit Min Al Jinn, a clever jinn, Shaitan married, there's a Shaitan married and there's a free jinn. Shaitan and married, these, the Shaitan married who are chained in Ramadan, not all Shaitan, the Shaitan and married, which is the most evil of Shaitan, will be chained in Ramadan. And, uh, right. and there's a free min al jinn, he's a jinni, he believes in Allah, but he's more clever, like his professor in, his, in what he's doing. He's very clever, he knows what he's doing, and he's the most skilled among the jinn. And Allah said, Allah didn't tell us, the one who said he has knowledge from the book, whether he was 
um, human or jinn. That's and, right. And the, that's my point. Uh, yeah, the other interpretation, who has knowledge from the book, قال الذي عنده علم من الكتاب أنا آتيك به أنا آتيك who is talking to who أنا who is talking the one who has knowledge from the book he said أنا آتيك آتيك who who he was talking to the kafir آتيك آتي bring to you who is you now there's many interpretation to that and one of them says that it's actually Suleiman himself. When the Marid, when the, when the Shaitan, the Afrit said, I will bring it to you before you finish your assembly, Suleiman himself answered that uh, Afrit and he said to him, I can bring it to you before you eye blink. So the, the interpretation here by Sheikh Sharawi, one of the top scholars who interpreted the Quran, um, he said that the one who have knowledge from the book was Suleiman. And Suleiman said to the Afrit, contrary to your um, um, offer, I will bring it to you before your eye blink. So he was talking to the Afrit, saying to him, but I will bring it quicker before your eye blink. And, and, uh, and the throne was there. And it is known that Suleiman was um, made uh, be able to use um, the uh, instant move. He was moving from country to country using um, the wind and just uh, riyah to him. And if you take uh, riyah, there is riyah could be, uh, I mean, planet Earth, we haven't got more than like um, 200 miles an hour. But there's another planet says Riyah, a speed of 40,000 miles an hour. There's, uh, but then there's uh, um, now quantum physics who have entanglement and superimposition. Superpositioning, you can be in two places at the same time. And entanglement, you can communicate instantly with the other end of the universe. So he have it seems, knowledge to move objects instantly. And it seems to be, according to Sharawi, it was. Prophet Suleiman himself. And I Prophet Suleiman, obviously, Allah has really will make these miracles performed by him. The miracles, the mighty of Allah is not that only he does things himself, but he can make you do things. Like he made um, uh, Ibrahim salam, cut the birds into four pieces and scattered it on the mountains and Ibrahim called it and it came. So the birds came back to life and responded to the sound of Ibrahim. Ibrahim, when uh, he built Kaaba, Allah said to him, make azan to people to come. And he said, <laughs> where is the people? You know, It's only me and my wife and my son and a few other people. And he was told, you make the call and we will reach your call to the farthest of the hills. So in the Alekal, Allah said, do the adhan and people will come from the farthest part of the earth and they do. And they have been doing it for the last five years. Yes. So Allah made the call of Ibrahim reach the farthest. He made the hand of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he put his hand in the water and the water started gushing from between his fingers. So that if, if the outsider come and say, oh, Muhammad is God, so he can't make this happen. It's not. Allah made Muhammad وسلم, able to do things which look godly only. Like Musa split the he uh, sea with his stick. It wasn't Musa, it wasn't the stick. It was Allah وسلم, split the sea. But it appeared to the Pharaoh and his army that Musa did it. So if a human did it, so Pharaoh followed him and he drowned. It wasn't Musa who split the sea. It wasn't Musa who was going to put back the sea as it was. Allah said to Musa, Leave the sea as it is. Because Allah wants to Pharaoh and his army to be dragged inside the sea and then he dropped the water on top of them. So here um, in, uh, in Ayah, according to Imam Sharawi, it's actually it's more likely than uh, that Ibrahim, Suleiman, he is the one who performed the 
Trans in one translation, in one translation, it said it was a member of the children of Israel who did it. Oh, that's uh, that's they took from Israelis. They took from the Israelis, but 